Yeah, uh, we have to to to, to reflect uh, to reflect about this trial and error um, culture of IT uh, and 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 see how it fits the 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 world. Of course, it has given us um, a lot of opportunities of exploring exploring uh, uh, new opportunities while we are already exploiting the businesses related to it. What I mean here is. Uh, it's good that in English they have these two words, explore and exploit. I don't know. Are you familiar with the difference between the two? The, the explore is actually exploring. Like, discovering, change, discovering, change, right? Discovering. <laughs> exactly. Exploiting is more... Exploiting is more like uh, uh, getting what so you can from uh, something. So it's, it's getting the benefits of something. Uh, so not, not many businesses allow for exploring and exploiting at the same time. But uh, IT does. We provide our customers with products that are not completely, um, let's say, that are, not, that are not ready for the market. But we already provide those uh, products and services to our customers. Uh, uh, and we, we use them as uh, part of our, even our, how do I say, our, um, uh, our, our own team that would be explo uh, 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 that would be checking where where we still have uh, problems and, and and trying to improve the quality of the product while it is already being used. So in fact, we turn our our customers into our empl employees in the quality field or something. Many times we we give them uh, beta products to to test and and we tell them, look, you are you should be honored because you're the first ones who have access to this technology. And in fact, what they are is that they're guinea pigs, right? Uh, that are being subject to experiments. Uh, so this happens uh, for the good and, and the bad. And in fact, this is part of uh, our, our conversation today, right? We want to get closer to our, to our customers so that we can uh, understand our products better. And of course, so that we can understand our products better and their ability to, to provide uh, our customers with the value that they need. Uh, if our products do not provide value to our customers, that means that our customers will not be willing to pay the price that we want them to pay for that product. All right. So just to 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 get into our topic uh, of uh, today, let me just wait. No, just, just give me a second here. I have to change the screen. Uche, if you're trying to say something, Uche, your voice is very far away. No, it's the we can't. Far, we I can't see. hear. Yeah, we can't hear Uchi. No. Oh, now now it seems that go. It's... Okay. Uh, it's quite interesting. I asked for the difference between exploiting and exploring. Mm -hmm. And reading the first uh, article, the one by McKenna, mm -hmm. they talked about marketing and how marketing intimacy makes the product better or makes more money for the 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 customers i think this idea is what happened today but it's more i wouldn't say it's exploring it's exploiting this day because in for it products especially of this day and age where we have internet of things and you maybe visit the website and then this use your data or save your data or you sign up thinking it's for your benefit but you use this um you use exploitative method through data science and data analytics mm -hmm. data technology to look for the best way to sell their product to you mm -hmm. it, it, it's like it's like this McKenna's idea in marketing has been transformed into what it's not supposed to be. But if you are looking at it in hindsight, it's still the same thing, but most people are not aware. I think most people were aware back then because it was calling to do your research, but now they don't need to call you. They just need statistics from mm -hmm. the two data they're getting from different people. Wow. Yeah, one interesting uh, thing, uh, Uchi, is that I remember that I had a colleague uh, about 20 years ago. Um, he was in the business school. Uh, and he used to say so. So, so he talked a lot about marketing, and he said uh, marketing people. Of course, he, he was very radical, and he said marketing people have a deal with the devil. That was 20 years ago. You know, maybe at the time that McKenna was proposing this, uh, these ideas here, uh, this colleague of mine already said, "Look, mar what marketing does 
uh, is uh, uh, is completely out of uh, this world, and, and they have a, they have a deal with the devil because uh, they, they keep telling us that everything that they're doing is for our good as customers, but in fact they want to turn us into their prisoners, and they want us to to have no other alternative than their own products and so on and so forth. At that stage, I thought he was a bit uh, radical, but uh, and and, and uh, but but, but I, I have the same impression as Uchi when we read Makina today. We think, well, in the 90s, this seemed a that, that basically what they were proposing was simply that we have to get closer to, to our customers so that we understand them better and we provide them with better value. Uh, nowadays, in fact, I, I have to admit that even at that stage, I understood what my 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 friend was uh, trying to say when he when he told us that marketing people had this deal with the devil. Um, at that stage, things seemed. Uh, simply, it seemed that in fact what they wanted to, to provide us with was simply a, you know, a better experience, uh, a better a better product, something that was better shaped to our own needs. Uh, of course, uh, companies, organizations uh, in general, they are there in the markets uh, for one reason. You would probably say to 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 earn uh, to earn money, right? To 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 get get money for their their for their um, stakeholders. Uh, well, that, that's the second reason. The, fir the first and main reason is to survive the market. They, have to, uh, they, they want to survive the market and by surviving the market, then providing their stakeholders with, uh, with uh, let's say, with the profits of their, of their performance in the market. So uh, uh, when I say that surviving the market is even more important than, than, than providing the stakeholders with, um, let's say, with, with the profit of the business is that you can only profit if you are in the market. So companies do tend to even sacrifice the short term if they strategically if, if they're strate strategically run, if they if, if they're able to understand that they have to sacrifice the short run to succeed in the long run. Right? Uh, but anyway, they wanted to survive in the market. The companies are not there to please their customers. They're there to survive in the market. Their organizations are like any other organism. Like we are in the world, we are here to survive, right? We try, we as individuals and we as, as human beings, we, we struggle to survive uh, in this in, in the environment. Organizations are like that as well. So if an organization has in its DNA this uh, impulse towards surviving in the market, uh, we can say that uh, serving their customers is only a means to achieve that, right? So uh, although it's very beautiful when we, 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 we listen to marketing people saying we are here to, to serve the world, to, pro to provide the world with uh, a better, uh, let's say, with better products, with uh, to, to, to make people's lives easier, to make people's lives happier or whatever. In fact, you have to ask why, and then the why is to survive in the market. Uh, of course, as the market becomes, or, and it has become more competitive, the more competitive the market is, the more companies have to struggle to survive in the market, and the least important it becomes to simply serve its customers. Serving the customers is a means to achieve the survival in the market. Uh, if they find other ways to survive in the market uh, that do not relate necessarily to serving the customers, I I bet they, they're going to do that. They, they, they will end up doing that. So uh, indeed, when Uchi says, yeah, now we have all this um, about, uh, the data science uh, information that is collected from, from uh, users and from customers, and can you can be used to, of course, marketing will, will, will keep saying to provide them with more value. But at the same time, we could think uh, that is used to extract more value from the customers. So some of that reflection that we did in the first day of our class uh, of, of our course, um, when I was uh, telling you that we have developed that IT and other technologies that we have these days uh, are improved means uh, to achieve unimproved ends. Uh, it seems to me that uh, uh, marketing plays a strong role here into perfecting the the, the process, per perfecting the the, 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 the the methods that we have to achieve results. But uh, we are not we as humans are not necessarily determining the results that we want uh, to achieve. We 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 leave though we leave that to let's say to destiny. And what happens is that companies end up say well. I will. I have to, 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 to produce more value. In the past, I could even say, well, there's so much value in what I do that I can share it with customers and we are all happy. Um, nowadays, in many cases, 
uh, I think that there are companies that are there only to extract as much value as they can from the customers and uh, and in, in ways that they imprison the customers. So we definitely, uh, 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 I think that we should struggle with that, uh, uh, let's say, with that quest of uh, thinking, okay, we do have a lot of technology these days, but what are what are our goals? And, and not our goals as, as companies, our goals as maintenance. Where do we want to go with these technologies? Uh, and... Uh, that will probably mean that if we if, if we if we take that uh, discussion seriously, that we will change a lot uh, the, the way the ways in which uh, companies can perform and, and, and what they can do. Uh, my guess is that we're not doing it, and my guess is that we're not even concerned about it. At least we're not concerned about it to the extent we should. Uh, so that we change, let's say, the environment in which organizations can work, and and and, and then. Uh, uh, Computer science, uh, sorry, computer science, uh, uh, um, sorry, data science, and 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 the possibilities of artificial intelligence will not necessarily uh, be there for the good of mankind. They will be there for the good of organizations. Some organizations, and organizations will maybe become uh, more remote, uh, remotely related to humans, and that could uh, lead uh, to a let's say to some. Dark future in terms of uh, uh, yeah, the Terminator future. Exactly. Uh, uh, so, so, some of what we've seen in the movies, and we thought, yeah, well, this is only for for your amusements. No, in fact, there was already some reflection about where we are going when we perfect the 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 the, 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 the means, but we do not perfect the ends. We do not uh, think of where we want to go with this. If we don't create. Uh, new rules, which means an environment that uh, places human at the central, the, the, the center of uh, the decision making in in organizations. Again, um, organizations are not there to, let's say, to to promote value for customers. That, I mean, they do that as a means to achieve their survival. When their survival is affected, when their survival is at risk, this is something that they will not uh, think about. And uh, and of course, the more uh, organizations have computers and 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 and, and strong technology. Uh, the, the the more imbalanced the relationship is between uh, sellers, the, the, the organizations, and buyers, the customers. Uh, I remember that about uh, now. Now it's probably about 15 years ago. I have a brother who lives in in Spain, uh, and. Um, and uh, well, in, in this globalized world, it's convenient to, to have someone living in Europe uh, uh, when you when you want to buy something that is manufactured in, in Europe. Uh, and I remember I, I brew beer right, uh, at home. I'm 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm a beer brewer uh, for for yeah for fun for. <laughs> but I but I I, I but I it, it's for, it's for fun. But I do that in sort of a, a large scale for let's say for for an individual. I brew beer. Uh, in a pan that is a 200 liter pan. 200 liters means, uh, well, I have to change here so that you see my, it's probably this large, the the, the, the circumference of the, the top of it is this large and it's it's a meter higher. So the, the, the pans that I use to brew beer. Uh, right. And then um, and then one day at, I, I had woken up early in the morning. I think I had a thesis to read or something, but of course uh, being, uh, being, uh, citizens of the 21st century. Before I started doing what I was, I was, what I needed to do. I woke up to to work, but I was procrastinating a bit, and I was there on social networks or whatever, and uh, and I saw this uh, beautiful 200 liter pen that was produced in Italy. Uh, it was, um, um, yeah, it, it was something that uh, I mean, I, I, of course, uh, many times couldn't I buy a pen like that here in Brazil? I probably could, but it would cost me five times the price. Uh, of, of that pen in Italy. And I thought, well, Italy is very close to, to Spain, right? So if these guys can deliver this pen uh, to my brother, maybe when I go to teach in, in, in France, I can hop to, to Spain and, and, and get it and bring it back or whatever. Well, it turned out at five o'clock in the, in the morning, I was not thinking too much about the size of the pen. I bought the pen. I, I, I asked them to deliver it to, to Madrid. Uh, it was delivered a week later. It was there in front of my, my brother's building. I remember that he phoned me and he said, what are you doing? Uh, you know, the, the, the guy there at the, the, the door entrance of, of the building told me that there is, a, um, there is an order there for me, that, but, he, but that he doesn't know how I'm going to, to, to pick it because it's too big. Uh, and then I asked him what it was and he said, it's a pen. 
And I said, oh, a pen. Uh, can, you, can you put it in the elevator and, and I'll, I'll get it up here in my apartment? And he said, I'm not sure if it's going to fit the elevator. Well, it turned out that it, it fit the elevator, uh, but it did not fit the door. It could not get into the, his apartment. He had to, let's say, to then assemble the doors of his, his apartment to pull it into, into the, the home. And then it was there for six months or so. Uh, I was only planning to, to go to, to, to France in the second semester. This was the first semester of the year. And he said, how on hand did you, did you think of buying something this big? I said, I didn't know it was that big. It was so easy to just click and buy it. Uh, I clicked and bought it. And then he said, how are you going to take it to Brazil? And I said, well, I thought about luggage. And he said, well, it's the size. Think of a big a big bag, one of those extra large bags. It's, it's twice as big. Well, it turned out that at that, at that stage, uh, uh, I, I managed to, 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 to bring it to Brazil later on as luggage. I had to pay extra for for, for, for it. Because of the dimensions, not because of the weight. It wasn't it wasn't that heavy. I think it was about 20 kilos. Uh, but uh, so it, it turned I turned it into my let's say into my bag. Put all my under my underwear all, all my clothes down. And it came to Brazil. I put it in, in a, a big sack. Uh, and it became my my luggage. I was able to to bring it to Brazil. Uh, but that was uh, an example of how uh, you know um, these companies. I'm, I'm talking about 15 years ago. Uh, what was the reason for that to appear in front of my eyes at five o'clock in the morning at the time that I was weak in my decision making, right? Uh, they knew that, I, that that was something that I wanted to buy, right? Uh, ha, have any of you ever seen on 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 the social networks or on or, or on, uh, on on your computers an advertisement for a two hundred liter pen? Probably not, right? Of course, it only appeared in front of my eyes because they well, knew. Have we seen advertisement for things we wanted? Exactly, exactly. We were interested. In yeah. And sometimes people say that uh, uh, they know things that we didn't even know that we knew, right? They, the, 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 so, so this data science has been around for, for a while. Of course, it's, it's getting each time more sophisticated. There are more tools, more technology, uh, improved means. But where are we going with that? I'm not complaining about my purchase. It, end, it, it ended up that it was very useful. It's something that I use a lot, my 200 liter uh, uh, beer brewery pen. But... Uh, but we do buy uh, a lot of stuff that uh, we only buy because sellers have learned what Makina and these guys were proposing back then, right? And it's much more than, although they say we want to, to get closer to customers so that we can, we can serve them better, it's more than that. It's not serving the customers better, it's serving the organization better. And uh, of course, if, if companies can do that in a way that customers are still pleased, that's fine, but that, that, that's not what most organizations would care about. Uh, uh, in fact, many of the, the products they're selling these days um, are not products that individuals, even though the people that work for those companies would be proud about and say, you know, I work for this company that builds this product. We're not proud about, about it any longer. So there's something wrong there. I remember that the generation of my parents, right? Uh, people were, were proud of working at a company because it did something that they really believed that they were providing the world with something that made a difference right. nowadays i mean it's not that we don't see enthusiastic people that still you know hit their their, their lung uh, their, 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 they go like that and say yes uh, i work for but nowadays that's brainwashing when, when someone is so enthusiastic about the company they, they work for we think this guy is stupid i mean any reasonable person says come on how can someone be so uh, uh enthusiastic about this product that they, 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 they provide the world with, this is just another way of uh, making money and manipulating people's uh, um, perceived needs or whatever. Right? Um, so I want you to take this, uh, uh, of course, we, we are, our purpose with uh, Makina's uh, paper and, and Nabisan, Nabisan paper here is still, let's say, still relates to the romantic idea of let's try to understand our customers to provide them with better service, to provide them with better products but we have to understand that uh, technology allows companies that go much further than that uh, and that there there the alignment between the the interests of customers and companies um, is is not uh, let's say a, a long-term alignment and and in fact I, I do see what, what, what we can look at, the, uh, at what they propose here uh, enthusiastically and, and, and thinking gee this is this is really great that uh, companies can learn so much about customers because we can provide them with better services but at the same time I, I, I think that this is a warning that we are perfecting the means we're not perfecting the ends uh, uh, this doesn't this doesn't lead companies to necessarily 
do what they say that they're doing, that is uh, better understanding the customers to serve the customers better. Right? Well, so uh, without uh, uh, being too depressing here, and uh, l l l l let's jump uh, straight into, in, into Makina. Uh, Uchi has already uh, mentioned a, a few interesting things about this paper. Makina, uh, just to give you some context, uh, Regis Makina was a marketing guru of the, the 90s. He was very influential. He has several books. I can't tell you. Better there, folks. Actually, here, I have. The other day, was, uh, oh, uh, I was thinking of this class here, and I found one of Makina's books here, real time. Exactly. Uh, see, the, 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 this paper that you, you read is real time marketing, and he has a, a, a book, real time preparing for the age of the never satisfied customer. Right? Uh, so he was very, very influential. Um, uh, and uh, and I th again, I think, uh, of course, the examples that we get from uh, um, a paper like this are, are dated examples, uh, but the message is still an important message for many, many companies, right? I, I keep thinking why it takes so long for important messages to, to get through our thick, uh, uh, you know, skull, right? Uh, my answer to that is we have been exposed for the, the uh, to, uh, we have been exposed to the industrial revolution for too long, right? It was three hundred years of uh, the same thing. Uh, now we have new means, new new ways of doing things, and we try to use these means to do the same things. So this is why it takes so long. This is why Makina is still relevant uh, thirty years later. Right? What he, he was saying back in ninety five still makes sense uh, to many uh, organizations. And again. I'm talking here about the possibilities uh, of better serving customers, but I'm also talking about this uh, uh, covert uh, second intention of, uh, you know, making sure you understand your customers better than your customers themselves, so that you can profit the most from the experience you have with them. Right? Uh, McKenna doesn't talk uh, openly about this, and, uh, and maybe he's not even well in, in their let's say in their deal with the devil. Uh, they would never uh, uh, talk about that that clearly, but this is something that uh, uh, you know. Thirty years later, I think that now we are all concerned. I remember that I used to, to even even twenty years ago, I used to already concern about uh, these problems of knowing the customers better than they know themselves. That that was a concern to me because I thought that could lead to manipulation. But I remember that at that stage, uh, and mainly when I was teaching at the business uh, school, uh, there would be a lot of reaction against that uh, that because people really thought that companies uh, would only succeed in the market if they were able to, 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 let's say, to, 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 to make their customers happy. Uh, and, 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 and I say, and, and nowadays I think uh, I've proven right in my skeptic, uh, skepticism because I think they, they manipulate us to, uh, to, to an extent that we can't be happy any longer. No human is happy because we want to have things. It, it seems that we got to a world in which it's much more important to have things than to be. Uh, something right, uh, so that was the manipulation of uh, our well, let's say at least in the Western society of our capitalistic um, uh, approach to to organizing uh, to, to organizations. Right? Um, uh, of course, this varies from from uh, one part of the world to another, uh, but we have to admit that capitalism has been strong enough to to push other alternatives of, uh, of let's say of economic life into a, at least a marginal position in the world. Uh, but again, capitalism perfects the means. It, it has no concerns whatsoever with the ends. Uh, all right, what, what, what else impressed you uh, with uh, or caught your attention in this uh, paper by, by Regis McKenna? Uh, I have one question like uh, how he was saying, uh, uh, giving uh, good products to customers, like uh, making them happy in the IT sector. Mm -hmm. I think uh, in IT sector, some companies are using their old version uh, tools to make the customer happy. But what do you mean by uh, real uh, real products to make the customer happy in the IT sector? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Pradeep. I'm not. I'm not very sure if I understood your question. Could you could you rephrase it? Could you could you say it again? Uh, you can say like. A, a, in Amazon, we are used to buy some products mm -hmm. as, as our need, actually. Mm -hmm. But coming to IT sector, it's totally different, right? What uh, 
companies can give the products the customer should accept that actually they don't know what the, the technologies and the uh, mm. new versions they are using right i i think uh, the problem that you are thinking of there is the problem of, not of the it sector but a problem of any knowledge products right knowledge products when they're sold whoever is selling them knows what they're selling whoever is buying it doesn't know right when you, when we're buying knowledge it, it, it means we're buying because we don't know it so it's difficult to value uh, and we we end up valuing it on what the seller uh, 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 proposes it to be or, or advertise it to be or or based on what we've heard that other people's experience was with that uh, with that product so in general it's it's almost like uh, how uh, how do you decide on buying a book right can you value, can you value a book before you read it for example i tell you this is a good book you look at it and you say well it has a nice cover or maybe not even so nice it has some i don't know 150 200 pages maybe 200 pages i'm not too bad at, at, at guessing uh can you tell anything about the value of the book before you read it no you can't yeah. so so it's mm -hmm. see, see it's knowledge yeah, say, yeah. Yeah, we will say the uh, according to author name and when they released and the version of the book, we can see the value the book. Actually, I'm what I'm asking means in IT sector, we uh, the customer can cannot value the technology uh, as they want. No, we, we value based on our expectations, not on 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 a real understanding of. If it, on, on the other hand, for example, uh, what is the value of a pencil like this? We know exactly what a pencil is worth before before we buy it, right? Because we know what we're going to do with it. Well, not necessarily exactly, because maybe this one. Uh, well, it's pretty much. I mean, I, I don't think that I, I ever thought. Well, uh, a pencil by one brand is different to a pencil by another brand. I'll, I'll just buy its 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 commodity. I'll buy probably the the cheapest one, uh, and it will suit my needs. But it's because I'm not buying knowledge here, or. Uh, I'm being unfair to this technology. This was uh, packed knowledge in the past, right? There was a uh, there was a time in which this was the let's say the technology that would make a difference in the world. The possibility of writing uh, on on paper instead of having to write on rock. Writing on rock was probably much harder, right? So, so this technology at some stage was probably very valuable uh, and, and, and valuable for the expectation that people had about what they could do with it. Uh, but this is what happens with knowledge. Knowledge we we buy knowledge based on our expectations about what we will be able to do with it. And later we, we, are, we, we either, uh, uh, well, get those expectations fulfilled or we, we get disappointed, but we have already paid for it. So it's, it's not an IT issue, it's an, it's an issue related to any knowledge product. If you go to the movies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a price that you have to pay for the tickets to get and watch a movie. You will only know if it was good or not after you watch the movie and then you say, well, I wish that I had not wasted my time with this movie, but you've already paid for it, and uh, and, and and there's nothing that you can do uh, with respect to it. So, uh, Makina, uh, he, he he was not concerned specifically with. Uh, in fact, he was not concerned with any industry whatsoever. He's not talking to people uh, in the IT industry or in any other industry. He's he's saying that IT has changed the has changed the let's say the the, the world for marketing people, that marketing was never going to be the same again after mm -hmm. IT became part, let's say, of the environment, right? Uh, okay. and, and by, by, by the way, uh, two words that, that appear a lot in this text, uh, broadcasting and narrow casting. Right? Broadcasting, the idea, for example, of the radio or the TV, uh, when you broadcast, it means you, you, you throw a message in the air, right? And you hope that that message fits someone. So you, you throw you throw your message on everyone, and you hope that a few of, of the people that uh, that are let's say affected by the, that, that that receive that message are affected by it and end up buying your product. Uh, narrow casting that is one of, of the possibilities that uh, he claimed that IT would provide companies with is different. It says you don't throw a message to everyone because that's a waste. Uh, you throw specific messages to each of the individuals in the crowd instead of uh, trying to affect the whole crowd. Okay. Have you heard of Cambridge Analytics? Cambridge. No. Uh, 
Cambridge Analytics was a company that used uh, uh, data science uh, and, uh, well, at least it's claimed to, to, to have made the election of Donald Trump possible in the United States in 2016. Oh. Right. Cambridge Analytics was, let's say, to some extent, was following McKenna's idea. That they were saying, I'm not going to broadcast uh, ideas to anyone. I will narrowcast ideas. The ideas that I, uh, I wish uh, Vasim to have access to, I will place them uh, to him and only to him, not to other people, because I know that uh, those ideas will uh, cause an impact there. Vasim will, will think differently if I provide him with some specific ideas. Uh, in the case of Pradeep, it's going to be different ideas. Of course, Cambridge, and, and, and there, is a, there is even a documentary, an important documentary about Cambridge Analytics, and, and I'm not here taking any party, right, right? I'm not in favor of any, any of the, the political movements there in the world. In fact, I do think that most of them have radicalized to, to, to an extent that none of them is right. But, uh, but uh, so I'm only using uh, Cambridge Analytics here for the sake of uh, telling you about these ideas of, of uh, narrow casting. For example, if they knew that you were uh, um, a Republican, right? A, Rep a Republican was already probably inclined to vote for, for Donald Trump. Right? Uh, then they had some message for this guy. If they knew that you were a, a, a Democrat, the message was completely different. So, for example, they were trying to make uh, to, 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 to to they were trying to to, uh, to make uh, uh, Democrats not go and vote. They, they were trying to, to, to convince Democrats that their vote was not important. That ele election, if they stayed at home, it would be better. And they were, on the other hand, if if people were seemed to be Republicans, they wanted them to to, to go. So, uh, uh, and they were doing that individually. And it's not, I mean, uh, it's, it's when we have the technology to process uh, data in large scales, it's not difficult to treat uh, people individually. I mean, I am sure uh, that you can, uh, if, if I gave you someone, uh, someone's, uh, let, let's say, if, if I provide you, provi provide you with the possibility of browsing, uh, even browsing what, let's say, what I browse on, for, for example, if I get to, to YouTube these days, what will YouTube show me? It will show me things about beer brewing because they know that uh, that's something that I'm interested about. It will show me uh, uh, things about uh, um, uh, international markets and, 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 and the ways uh, technology affects the uh, international market, because that's something that I'm interested about. So if I show you, you, you know, uh, my, the, the first page for my YouTube page, for example, it will show you a lot of deri derivatives in, 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 in stock and stock options. That's something that I, I play with for fun. Uh, uh, for fun and for, for and of course for as 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 a way of uh, investing, uh, and 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 if if we were we'll, if we were to to see what uh, it shows you, it's going to be completely different things. So uh, that is already done in a way that uh, we we could one could argue. Makina would argue that that is providing each one of us with more value. Uh, but is it really? Uh, is it providing us with more value? Is should we be uh, being should we be uh, being exposed? To, to things that we, we like all the time? Shouldn't we be exposed to something different from what we already like so that we maybe change our, our likings or, or, or think of different things? Um, one of the problems of narrow casting, uh, uh, and, and this is a problem that is very clear now in 2023, and that maybe it was not as clear for people in, the, in, in, in 95, for example, uh, is that it, it may lead people to live in bubbles, right? It may lead us to, to become prisoners of echo chambers where we only relate to other people that have a, a, a thoughts that are very similar to our own. So radicalism in, in the world has become, a, 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 well, it's, it's always been a problem, but it has become a, a let's say, a, a, a stronger problem these days because radicals only talk to other radicals. And when... And, and, and talk to other radicals that have the same perspectives of the world, and they think that that's the, the absolute normal. So, so they don't view us as being radical. They think that they are the, the most, uh, um, let's say, uh, reasonable people in the world, uh, and those that are against their ideas are the radicals then, and the radicals in the opposite direction. So we are. It, 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 it turns out that uh, our broadcast, uh, sorry, our narrow casting techniques that could have been used to to serve uh, markets in, in, in ways that customers could find what they needed or what they wanted easier, have also 
turned into a very problematic um, uh, uh, thing for our society. Right? So again, this is not only uh, we have this expression in, in 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 Portuguese that we say this is not only roses, right? It's there's there's also the the spikes. There's <laughs> uh, with respect to, and I want you yeah I, I want you to be critical about uh, you know all the developments that we have in technology mainly because as I, I keep saying our developments have all been about perfecting the methods. But we don't do anything about our goals, right? Where do, do we see people thinking about where do we want to go with all this technology? Maybe there is some crazy philosopher, uh, but it's probably someone who lives outside our society. You know, it lives like almost like a hermit, uh, you know, so that he's not influenced by the power of our technological means, because uh, because otherwise he would be like we are sort sort of caught into this uh, this web and and and. and and, and notice the web here is, is of course, we, we, we even call it the web, but caught in the web, like if, 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 if we waiting for a spider to come and, and, and suck our <laughs> and suck our blood and suck our life. Uh, but anyway, uh, 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 again, our, our idea here is, I, 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 I do think that we always have to be very critical about uh, our technologies. And, and I think it's a role of the, the eagles of this world to understand uh, what we're doing and, and to try and try and be responsible in what we do, but at the same time, and, so, and therefore being uh, very critical, so it's, I don't think it's a waste of time for us to go in, in exactly in the opposite direction to the one that we wanted our texts to lead us. But um, but, uh, uh, but but I do cons I do have this concern that we are we're developing our technologies without thinking the reasons why we're developing them. Uh, there's a, there's a part on on this text uh, where uh, Makina talks about time to market. And time to acceptance. Did you were you able to get the the, the difference between those terms? Okay. Um, I don't know. Let me see if I. Uh, some of this some of these texts are just uh, scans, right? Uh, I'm not sure. If, I think this may be. So I'm not sure if I. Let me just try and see. I can find here. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, uh, this is something that I have to do one of these uh, days. Uh, unfortunately, this text here, the uh, it, it is just a scan, right? Which means, uh, at least with, I don't know if you have any other tools there that when you when you see it, uh, it already uh, does some. Optical character recognition or something, and 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 can, can you can you try and find or 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 in your systems or 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 you can't uh, because I, I don't know where we would find time to acceptance in the in the in the paper here. But basically, the the idea is the following: um, if we are if we are a manufacturer uh, and we we want pardon which which page are you? Page ninety-two. Last paragraph of page ninety-two. Not the last paragraph, actually. It's, it's about there. Every year, on page ninety-two. Right, page ninety-two. Oh yeah, uh, here, here, it, yeah. This is one place where it, it refers to time to acceptance. Let me just take this off because it's getting hot here. We've we've had two days of rain, uh, non-stopping rain, in my city here. Uh, but at least it's just two days. I'm <laughs> like here, twenty-four-seven. Oh, but you know, in in, in one, it, it rains the whole year, uh, but it rains very little here. I'm talking about uh, tropical rain. You know, it's it's scary. Well, yesterday, Definitely. yes, just yesterday, it was uh, uh, fifty millimeters of rain. Wow. So that means five centimeters of rain everywhere. So it's 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 a lot of rain. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. So so. Um, uh, what is the difference between time to market and time to acceptance? If you have a product, if you develop the product, you put your engineers there to conceptualize this product, think of what the market will will, will want and need, uh, and then, uh, well, in fact, the engineers are probably not in the conceptualization process. But you uh, then you you have the engineers to design the product. Design the product. Yeah, the the, the, yeah. Gen the engineers are involved in designing. But before before design, there is this conceptualization phase, which is broader. Of course, you can have engineers in, in, in conceptualizing a product, but in general, as I, I keep telling you, engineers are problem solvers, not 
not, not question formulators. So the conceptualization phase is still a, a phase where you, you need a lot of, of uh, I, ideas going in different directions. Uh, but anyway, uh, we, we got to the situation that uh, the, the product has been designed, it has been manufactured, and now you, sh you, you send it to, to the retail and it sits there on a shelf in a retail uh, store and, uh, and still requires time until customers perceive the product. Because, I mean, think of you going to the supermarket. What do you see in a supermarket? Of course, there are people that go to the supermarket uh, just to kill the time and to see what is new. But most of us, yeah. most of us go there to buy yeah, things. Something that... in mind, you want to go there, you know what is it probably, you just pick you, it and go. You, you, and, and you go directly to the shelf where that thing is, you pick it and you, you go. You don't see things uh, uh, there, or it takes a long time for you to see something that is new in the market. So, uh, uh, the time to the markets usually happens before the time to acceptance by the market, because you can only accept something that you have already noticed, that you have decided to buy, and then afterwards it becomes part of your, your let's say, routine. Uh, what Makina claims here is that uh, if you are able to involve your customers uh, in this previous process, in this pre previous processes of uh, conceptualizing uh, the product, designing the product, even uh, manufacturing the product. Why not? I mean, you, you, we, we, there, 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 there is the possibility of involving your customers even in, in building your products. Some in, in some cases. If you do that, when the product is available at the market, the customer is already waiting for it, right? So, uh, McKenna claims that the time to the market should be exactly the same as the time to acceptance. So, but, but in order for that to happen, uh, you have to involve, the, the customer has to be involved beforehand. Uh, you cannot expect the customer only to know about the product when it is at the, at, at, at the shelf in the, the retail store, right? And how do you get the customer to be involved beforehand. This is probably what, what most of the paper is about, is you, if you bring the customer beforehand, if, 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 you, if you include the customer in the design of the product already, uh, there is a much uh, greater chance that this customer is going to, 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 to buy the product because uh, uh, he or she was part in the, in the development of it. Uh, uh, people feel uh, more committed to something that they gave ideas and they would all feel like they own this product like exactly already. yeah 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 they, they, they have the feeling that that's part of their life already this works for products this also works uh, 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 I, I think that some of the ideas that Makina uh, uh, presents in this paper are also good for example for the involvement of uh, even of, um, of our uh, own people you know the, the employees of a firm right if you involve them in the decision making with respect to the products that you're developing uh, and then uh, they will feel much more committed to the success of that than if it was the boss's idea, right? I mean, right. yeah, in, 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 yeah in, in the past, yeah, yeah, go on. So I think it's going to actually show a difference and like, it is actually going to make a difference in terms of the quality or the value of the output that you're going to get out of them because it feels like personal for them. Each and every single individual, it will feel like I'm working on my idea, yeah. relatively speaking, and this is going to be the belief for each and every individual, mm -hmm. which definitely going to definitely get a better output, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Uh, uh, again, and, and when we think, why, why is it so uh, so common for companies to still have the boss's ideas on everything? It's my my easy explanation is, is it is three hundred years of industrial revolution. The boss had the ideas. Everyone else was only involved in the execution, right? Uh, uh, and and we, we can even go back to to uh, one of those uh, not, not this paper. Uh, not this paper, this paper here. We, we the, the industrial revolution was stuck here. Where? No, here. The industrial revolution was stuck here. Someone thought the business, the business leaders, the business strategists, and everyone else at the the bottom of the organization was there only to execute it. Right. Uh, so uh, after three hundred years of that, it's very. I mean, we are struggling to 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 have this transformation of our organizations into places where. More people have something to say instead of broadcasting the, the, the boss telling everyone this is what this is our strategy, this is what we do. Uh, uh, in this case, it, 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 we start having the possibility of having even emerging strategies. People thinking and, and telling their bosses, Look, and the boss saying that's good because it involves people. If people are committed with that, if they if, if they if, if, that, if, if it was their idea, they will do everything they can to make that idea uh, succeed. 
if they were part of the developers. Okay. Um, so I, I find this idea of, uh, of uh, making sure that we bring to parallel time to the market and time to, to acceptance as, as, as a key concept in, in, in this paper here, right? Because it, 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 it provides better involvement of customer from the beginning. Uh, it, 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 it allows for, for a much faster acceptance of the products by the market. And it also allows the, 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 the product to be much better shaped to that market because customers had a saying. They were saying what they, they, they needed. It was not, again, it's, it's different to that push to the market. It's pulled by the market, right? Uh, That's right. All right. What else? What are other ideas you found here that you found interesting? What does this drawing here uh, remind you of? What was the example that was given here? Uh, the, specific, uh, the customization and uh, uh, what is it? Specific, not specification. It was. But specialization, yeah, yeah, yeah. Personal, yeah. yeah. But the personal. Per notice it's a personalization that ha that happens through customization. It's it's not exactly. right. Yeah, uh, this is the Levi's uh, uh, example, right? I think this is pure customization, actually. It's not personalization at all. No, uh, we. I mean, personalization is something that we cannot do in an industrial, um, um, at least in, in, in industrial fashion. Uh, uh, it, it's always going to be we 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 like customization because customization allows for the feeling of personalization from the customer, but without us losing the benefits of producing uh, in, in, in a mass production scheme. Uh, so we want to have the, the costs of mass production and the value of, uh, of personalization and, and customization uh, allow, allows us that. Remember that customization, what, what is shown here is precisely what uh, the, oh, um, let me see where it's, uh, it's precisely what's, uh, Makina, uh, sorry, uh, uh, um, Henderson and Ben Katerman were proposing with this first vector here of their uh, of the model, the model that we discussed uh, uh, in our previous class. Right? So, uh, interestingly, uh, well, they're talking here about Levi's, right? Interestingly, uh, Levi's uh, this business, this Levi's business, did not succeed, right? Um, it was an experiment that they had in the 90s. Uh, it had a lot of, uh, of benefits to the customers. I mean, customers could buy customized jeans uh, for almost the price of a, uh, of, of a pair of jeans made in a, in a production line. Um, so, so the customers were happy. Uh, Levi's was twice as happy because Levi's uh, of course, first provide the, the customer with the products that the, the customer values more. So this, if the customer values more your product, at least you can sell it uh, at a higher price or, or, or you can sell more, right? Uh, but in addition to that, and maybe the most important thing for Levi's, and I would say the most important thing to any company is they were able to get much better information about those customers by having them go to the retail store, have their measures taken, as in the left side of the, 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 the picture there, have their measures taken, and then a product made to order. All those measures that were taken from hundreds or thousands of North Americans uh, to provide them with customized jeans were used later on for Levi's to adjust the, 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 the models that they used to, build, to, to, to produce the regular uh, small, uh, medium, large, extra large uh, jeans for the home markets. Right, so it seems that they're they're personalizing or they're customizing products here, so that the customer is is better served. But at the same, even more than that, they were getting information back. So I told you that the, the, this project did not succeed. Maybe it did succeed. Maybe the only reason for them to have this project back then, when technology was still not uh, mature for for this, they, they were pushing something that maybe nowadays this would be easy to do. But at that, at that stage, it was still probably a little challenging. Or very challenging maybe the main reason they were doing that was because they, they were actually buying that information from from their customers they were exchanging that information right they, they said well you get a, a, a product that better fits your body but we get some knowledge Feedbacks. feedback feedback uh, yeah. knowledge that will, will be very important for our business in fact if i go back to the henderson and van katerman paper here 
uh, they wanted this knowledge. They, they, they wanted to also they were concerned with the dynamic customization, but they were also concerned with knowledge leverage. They were they were getting a lot of information from these customers. And one important thing here is that, of course, Levi's had previously decided on the models, the, the small, medium, large, extra large, extra, extra large, or whatever, uh, in the 60s. And then in the 90s, they were still building or, 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 or producing their products based on, on those measures that they had from, from 20, 30 years earlier. So they definitely did not fit the American, um, uh, let's say, uh, the American body any longer. In fact, in the 90s, the North Americans tended to be very, let's say, very big. Uh, I think that from then on, they started getting a little more concerned about their health. But in the, in the 80s and in the 90s, uh, the, the North Americans that we saw in the streets in the, the United States were very different to those that we saw in the Hollywood movies. Right? In the Hollywood movies, they were all keen and, and energetic, but, uh, but the rest of the population was, uh, uh, was getting very, uh, let's say, obese, to, to say the least, because of their, 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 their uh, lifestyles. And, yeah. lifestyle, yeah. and, 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 and probably this was very... And think of you uh, saying, let's say, you, you want to do some, some um, market research, and you stop people on the streets. You, you see, you see an obese a lady or, or an obese man, and says, "Look, I think I have a lot of customers like you. Do you mind if I take your measures here because I, I, I want to to to, to produce uh, jeans for for fat people?" The guy would say, "I'll sue you for." <laughs> but they found a, a clever way of uh, telling people, "Look, I, I want to make sure that you will fit perfectly in in, in the jeans I make." And then and people would say, "Oh, sure, please take all my measures." Uh, so again. Uh, what they were doing here was the beginning of uh, all these possibilities of customization through the web and through the smartphone or whatever, in which now customers tell exactly what they they want to companies that can, you know, use crunch those data the way they wish to make sure that they provide customers with the best fit. Again, the problem is that the best fit is not necessarily the best fit to the, the customer's interest, but at least the best fit to their own interest as, as an industry, as, as a company. So when, when, when my students say, well, so this was not successful, uh, Levi's pro uh, project was not successful, I, I, I don't know why they stopped it, right? But when, I, I could say that maybe it was so successful that they could stop it after a couple of years, right? Say, well, we already have the, the, the information that we needed at that stage, of course, in the 1990s, right? We already have the information that we, we needed to, to improve our traditional uh, production lines. Uh, and, and for now, we will... We, we will stop this project because uh, because of whatever, right? Th this is one possibility. Another possibility that uh, an ego should think of is this was very good for the customer. This was very good for Levi's. So the customer got customized jeans. Levi's got the information they, they wanted and needed. How good was this for the retailer? What do you think? Do you think the retailer was was really happy about this mode of selling selling jeans the first time with the retailer? taking measures of the customer. And then after that, Levi's sending uh, customers an email and ask at that time it was an email, right? And asking, does that pair of jeans that you bought uh, from whatever retail shop uh, six months ago, does it still fit you? Because if it still fits you, do you want me to send a new pair of jeans directly to you? Where is the retailer? So basically the retailers, the retailers are the ones that use to take the measurements. Yeah. It's not like directly the representatives of uh, Lewis. Well, it, it, I, I, I don't know exactly the details. The paper doesn't. Uh, the, uh, the paper doesn't tell us uh, if it was if Levi's had uh, Levi's had someone in the retailer. But it was at the retailer when you went to the retailer that you, you got your your measures taken, and that those measures were input into uh, a computer system. Uh, so Levi's needed to have at the retailer. They needed to have a, a let's say a. Uh, computer terminal at that stage. Well, it could even be uh, in 90 something. It, it could be a PC already. They would have a PC. Or even a notebook, yeah. I mean. Yeah, at, at that stage. Well, but, but it wasn't on a, a, a notebook, the, the, the traditional notebooks. And, and the new notebooks was probably what not, not what they had there. But anyway, uh, measures were taken at the retail uh, shop. And, but the problem is after those measures were uh, with uh, Levi's, what was the bargaining power retailers had to keep their customers in the future? You know, uh, the, the retailer was out of uh, out of the business of selling uh, uh, jeans to, to that user if 
if uh, Levi's decided to send them an email and say, does it still fit you? If it still fits you, uh, I can sell directly to you. Otherwise, if it doesn't fit, go back to the retail office and, and uh, the retail shop and, and, and buy a new pair of jeans there. But notice, maybe the retailers were feeling that um, this, if this idea that Levi's was having uh, became uh, the trend, they would, they would be in the future, they would be out of uh, business. And in fact, I think this is sort of what has happened, hasn't it? Uh, I mean, 30 years later, many of those retailers are not there any longer because now people buy all sorts of things uh, electronically through the web uh, and not going to a retail shop any longer. So understand that sometimes, we, we although the technology seems to be uh, what will solve the customer's product, uh, problem and will also be probably the best way for the manufacturer to propose a, a business, it may affect the business of some other involved stakeholder and that stakeholder may be powerful enough to prevent that business to, to follow, follow, uh, happening, uh, follow, follow happening. For example, uh, this retail uh, shop here could tell Levi's, we didn't, like the, we didn't like the new game, we didn't like to play this, uh, we think that uh, this will weaken us in the future. So you have to decide, if you want to sell directly to your end customers, feel free, we are not going to sell Levi's any longer in our, in our shops. And then Levi's will say, wait, wait, 95% uh, of, my, of, of my sales happen through your retail uh, shop. I don't want to have uh, any dispute with you. Uh, please, let's keep doing what we, we've done in the past. Mm. Uh, yeah, go on. So, marketing is really tricky because the more you try to overfit to meeting customers in their customization, the more you make it kind of elitist. Because I don't think getting the customized jeans would be the same price as getting the regular jeans. Regular jeans are made in mass production, while the custom jeans has to be done by someone peculiar to your needs. And unless I am a, I am a fashion designer as well, so I know the process of making pants. And if I'm going to make a pants for someone, you have to pay a lot of money if I'm customizing it to your fit, your style and everything. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if, if a, a huger chunk of the population, if it's general, if a huger chunk of them is poor, uh, or not elite, this idea sometimes of customization may not work. Uh, I, I agree with you. If, if the population gets poorer and poorer, uh, we will end up uh, all wearing uniforms, right? Uh, th that may be another dark vision of the future. We will all wear some uh, uh, dull gray uniform that is given to us by the Big Brother or, or, or whoever well, is. It's already <laughs> happening. I, I'm not. I, I'm not saying it's mainly from the perspective of uniform because even elitist commodities are still uniforms too. It's actually relocating. Sometimes I see pe what people. I've been in fashion for five years, uh -huh. so I, I've really studied a lot of the markets. And where pe when people wear elite clothes, it's also a uniform. Sometimes it's also it, does, it doesn't give you personality that you also think you have. So there's a tricky on the, from the eyes of a normal person, they are seeing mm -hmm. you're wearing expensive clothes, right? And uh -huh. that's just what it's about. It's not about you wanting to wear that. You wear that for validation of others. I remember when you said there's something you said. I've forgotten. It was quite um, interesting about. Uh, oh, fuck. I can't, sorry. I can't, Don't worry if, you, if and when you remember, you tell us. I, 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 I'm always, I'm also a little hyper textual. I start talking about one thing and I, st I start talking about another, and I want to go back to to the origin of the the conversation. And sometimes I've, I'm I'm lost there. So don't worry. Whenever you remember, you, you tell us. Uh, I what I want to say in general terms is that overfitting with your product has its drawbacks too, mm. because sometimes your business might not survive. Depending, yeah. You, if you only if you. If you have a lot of money, you could survive, right? You could pump money into advertisement, marketing, using better design processes for your business, mm -hmm. using better means to get customers. It now becomes elite, but it's still... Mm, it, 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 aside from Apple, I don't see any other... Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't see any other market that's in IT that's very elite. I wonder how... Maybe we can, that can't even be... Well, you know, you're, you're thinking of IT. And, and notice, this class is not... IT for us is a tool, right? We, we, we want to think of all markets here. You Sometimes you, I think that when we are studying IT, we think that we're going to be in IT companies. Not necessarily. Maybe you're going to, to, to be working in a completely different field. And IT is 
is still very important uh, to them, either as infrastructure, as as uh, as uh, suggested by uh, Nicholas Carr. It's just infrastructure, but still you have to have the right uh, access. I understand you're, you're not talking about IT uh -huh. okay. specifically, but in France we have language everyone can understand. Right. No. Uh, uh, right. So, but so it's. it's uh, I don't think it's only uh, Apple. In fact, I, I do think that uh, well, our society has become. Uh, what I mean, our society is humans have become a little weird uh, more recently. I think we are we are manipulated by by brands uh, in, in one end, and I, I do agree with you that sometimes people have less uh, less money than if you say people want, want everyone wants uh, customized items maybe what you're saying is that not necessarily everyone will be able to afford it but at the same time notice that what makina is suggesting here with uh, with respect to customized items it is customized items that do not cost more than uh, industrial the, the traditional uh, mass production items or not much more in this case of, of the levi's jeans i realized they said they, they said that uh, it costed ten dollars more than the regular one and, and if we think ten dollars in in ninety five, it would probably be something like thirty dollars now. And and maybe Uchi was going to say, well, thirty dollars is what I want to pay for for the jeans, not for the for the differentiation for the you know. Uh, uh, but uh, the idea here is that uh, we can use technology to provide customers customers with customized products at, uh, without increasing the the costs of our production. Um, uh, infrastructure that much, uh, and and the reason for us to think that this is possible is that uh, the data that is generated, for example, here uh, uh, from the users of Levi's jeans, right, that have their me the measures of their bodies taken, those uh, that data will go into a in, in, into a database, and that database is going to feed the cutting machines that will cut the the the, 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 the jeans according to those uh, to. to to those measures that were taken, and then when, and in fact, the, the, the I don't know if you if you've seen the way the genes are made, it still uh, it still involves a lot of humans, but it involves uh, humans suing the the, the genes, right? Uh, if, if you had if if the, if the parts were cut by a machine, according to to the specific sizes of each person, whoever is suing, they are only I mean it doesn't matter if one one pair of genes is different to the next that is going to be made because they will always sue. At uh, I don't know, at one centimeter or half a centimeter away from the border of whatever they're suing, so they don't they don't need to know to know the the, the, the if if they're if if they're suing a large or a small or a medium, uh, because that's done one by one still. So of course, customization will have to take into account the kind of process that that, that is uh, involved there, and 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 most pro uh, processes do have parts of them that are still labor intensive. If that labor intensive process uh, happens. On top of uh, a, a data intensive or, or a knowledge intensive uh, process, that means that at the end you have basically products that are very different from one another, uh, but they were made still in a very industrial scale. Uh, I don't know if I, I was able to make sense here, but uh, again, think uh, for example. Let me let me. Uh, I don't have any good examples uh, right here, but think for example that I uh, I was to produce uh, cups like this, right? And well, this is this is the, let's say that that was the tartan. Like if if I were Scottish, that was the I don't know if they call it tartan or whatever of my family, let's say. And then uh, Vasin is from a, 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 a an Arabic a Scottish family, and they have a different uh, uh, it's a different printing, right? Uh, that would go on his on, the, on his cup. Uh, my cup is produced when they say, "Well, this is Alex cup." It just checks the database. It prints this with this design, and the next cup that comes. It will say, well, now it's a different design, different colors. It's going to be just a different. Uh, of course, the pro the process becomes more more complex than than producing all exactly the same. Uh, but technology is making it less uh, so because the 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 changes in the setup of the production are very quick. It's just a, a, a another line in a database or something uh, that changes. I don't know if this makes sense to to, to you, but. Uh, uh, what what I'm trying to say is it, it is becoming less and less expensive to customize. In the past, customization was almost uh, like personalization. It, it was very uh, uh, very little affordable. Nowadays, to make products different, it, it is not. Uh, uh, it, 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 it doesn't make it more expensive from from the cost perspective, but it provides many times a lot a lot more value. Um, I have another example that is uh, this is probably a, a good example here. I, I told you that I'm a, a beer brewer. We 
we never sell beer. We we we, we brew beer, and then we while we're making more beer, we we, we drink the beer that we've we've made the, the previous session. Uh, but one thing that we do is every year um, here in, in Brazil, Christmas is a let's say it's a, a big holiday, uh, and it's one of those emotive holidays people related to still related to religion to some extent but even if, if they don't relate most people uh, even if people are not very religious they still relate to a time when they're thinking about others more often and everything so uh, we we usually what we we do is during the year we prepare some we fix some 300 bottles of beer we're, 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 we're brewing our own beer and we, we brew some 300 bottles for a Christmas um, uh, for Christmas donations and what we do then, um, we tell our friends, they love our beer, they, they always ask, can, can, can we buy your beer? And I say, no, you can't buy my beer. Because, you know, it's three professors that spend 12 hours in front of a 200 liter pen, of course, talking and drinking beer, but it's 12 hours to, to, to brew beer. If, if someone asks me, can I buy it? I will have to think of the, the time of those three doctoral <laughs> professors there and say, well, I don't know, this, this bottle of beer here, the cost of it is, I don't know. Doesn't cost uh, efforts, but you can. It's a hundred dollars. Would you pay? You know, the cost is a hundred dollars for you know. So if, if I had to turn that into a business, it would never be a profitable business. But of course, we don't do it for the you know. It's it's not time that we're we're spending there that we could be doing something that uh, we could uh, you know um, that, that we would earn, earn money for. It's that, that's our leisure. That's that's uh, hobby time. So hobby time. If you put if you put a, a price label in hobby time, you kill the hobby. So we said we will never sell a beer. But at the end of the year, we say, well, look, we have three hundred uh, bottles here. That if you want to give someone a, a bottle of beer as a, a Christmas present, you, you you do the following: instead of paying us, uh, well, it's not a hundred dollars. Instead of paying us, uh, 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 in fact, what, what we do is uh, it's, it's just that currencies in different parts of the world are different. But anyway, we we, we say. If, 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 if you if you give this um, let's say that there is this uh, people that, that take care of, uh, of um, children without parents or whatever if you, if you give this organization give them uh, let's say a uh, uh, hundred dollars and we will give you six bottles of our beer right you're giving to to, 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 to someone who's doing good they, they, they will use this money wisely to, to help little kids or old or old uh, elderly people. Uh, or whatever people that were injured in whatever uh, um, people that are refugees or whatever we usually have three or four different uh, uh, organizations like those that we support and, and then we, we say you don't give us money because you're not paying us for this but give them money and show us that you, you've given them uh, money and we will give you uh, six bottles of, of, of beer and they're going to be customized so the labels in those beers, you tell us uh, it's going to be our label, but it will show the name of the person you want to. For, yeah. in, in Christmas, we give in Brazil, we give presents to other people, so you will give uh, uh, people presents. Then you know what happens? Even if people think very mathematically, very let's say pragmatically, they will say, "Well, they, they're charging me. I, 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 I have to to give away a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars will give me six bo bottles. Each one of those bottles will cost less than twenty dollars. If I had to to to." To give my boss a, 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 a gift or or my friend or whatever, each one of those gifts would cost more than uh, than twenty dollars. So this is even a bargain. Notice we we, we we converted that into a much more value than people would see because now we're not giving them bottles of beer. We're giving them presents that they can give to other people. They're helping an organization and they're getting presents that they can give to, to other people and very cheap present because it's very difficult to find a present that you can give someone that costs less than twenty bucks, right? Uh, but it also has a good value at the same time. Yeah, of course, because it, it's, it's very personalized. They will they will get to, to their friends and say, "Look, this this was made specially for you. It's personalized." Of course, it's not personalized. And it is your name, particularly. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not personalized. It's customized. They, the, whoever whoever uh, is is let's say has has donated money to to, to those charities uh, and everything, they had to fill in a form. In our case, it's a Google Forms. They they write there the name of the person that will be printed in the label, and you know, in our case. We'll just uh, 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 print the uh, uh, you know the day that we we agree that we will deliver the the, the beers. We just print those labels for the three hundred uh, bottles. We'll print each one of them with the specific name because that's data that's mail merging. I mean, it's something that we do on Word and Excel, right? Uh, yeah. So the, notice that nowadays we can do that with Word and Excel. So IT is used to 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 customize items 
And it doesn't, it, it doesn't really matter if it's the 300 labels are exactly the same or if they're all totally different. So this is how far customization can go in terms of providing value without increasing the costs. The, our product is still, let's say, still done in, using the same process. And when we, we have to, and, and, and it's in, in our case, it's very manual because we, we'll, we'll, take, we'll get each one of those labels and manually place in the, in the bottles because, of course, if you're only going to do 300 bottles, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a very industrial process. But even if it were, if, if instead of 300, it was 300,000 bottles, they could still be labeled, each one of them, with a, with a, with a customized label without uh, much additional cost. Right, uh, uh, which I don't know if I, if I if I sold this idea to you that customizing doesn't necessarily need to be uh, more expensive than than doing uh, the the mass production or at least not uh, a lot more expensive. Of course, you, you, which you could argue, well, you you do need now you do need a computer, uh, you do, you do need to be connected to the internet and everything so that you can get that information that you can print. And beforehand, you could just print your label, and so the process was definitely easier before, but not much easier. Everyone has a, 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 a computer these days or, you know, uh, it, it's part of, 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 of living in the 21st century. All right, any, 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 any additional comments on, on Makina? Uh, I understand your perspective. Mm -hmm. Can you give your explanation and it's valid? Yeah, it's, it's basically the more technology we have, the, the easiest it is for us to use this technology to do different things than what we did in the past. We, we, we do have the possibility. To, and for example, if, if I ever wanted to turn my beer brewing into a business, I would say it probably would be a, I would try to go for a customized um, uh, product. Instead, I, I, I wouldn't uh, be intending to, to compete against the major brewers that brew beer for the whole world. Right now, there's Ambev or Inbev, uh, this Brazilian-Belgian uh, company. They they brew 60% of the beer for the world. Right? Do I want to compete against it? No. I, I they they for them it it, it it's it, it may not be interesting to to customize. But for me, for for and it's not because uh, uh, mine would be a small business. Uh, it, it is just that I want to compete in a different way. I, I want to compete for the, the the same money that customers have in their pockets, but offering a different products because I don't have the scale, right? But even, it's possible to do this even with the scale, uh, if, if, if one wants to, right? Okay, so um, yeah, maybe it's a, a good time for us to, to have a quick break uh, and, and then start with the, with the other paper. All right, there, there was, uh, I was thinking here while we, we were in our break, uh, there, there's one, probably one uh, expression that uh, Makina uses uh, in his paper that we did not talk about, but maybe uh, summarizes the, the main idea of Makina's uh, uh, paper, which is uh, technology may be used to build a dialogue with the customer. Right? So think of uh, uh, the opportunity of using technology to build a dialogue. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, the dialogue between the organization and the customer should try to involve each customer individually because customers want to be treated as um, as individuals as, as in, in a personalized in a in a personalized manner in a way that they feel special but from the company's perspective uh, we will benefit f uh, if, if we if that can be done uh, if the dialogue is between the customer and our systems not ourselves right we don't want to have if we have and, and mainly, uh, and I know that this is a concern that you have, when, whenever I talk about customization, you think, well, customization leads towards more complexity. We don't want more complexity. Uh, at least we don't want more complexity than needed, but we, we, we do want to take advantage of complexity if we have uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of customers. Uh, and in those cases, we want to provide each customer with a personalized or let's say uh, a customized experience uh, but we, 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 to provide them with a customized experience in which they feel that we are giving them our attention, it should be the attention of our systems. And, and when I say the attention of our systems, it doesn't seem providing them with uh, robots that pretend that they're human, although they're, they're getting very good right now, right? Uh, now it's almost impossible for us to detect if we're talking to a human or to a, to a, compu uh, to a computer. So in, in this sense, nowadays, it would be the first time that I would start saying, well, maybe we can get start getting in, uh, start involving 
uh, artificial intelligence or whatever in, in dealing with our customers. But even in the past, when we say put our system to talk to them, is when, when the customer is selecting the features of the product that they want to buy from our websites or from, from the app in their, their cell phones, uh, it's not, uh, our company is not there with a human waiting for them to, to take a decision. They're taking their decision at their own time, uh, but they are, they are exchanged, they're building a dialogue with our systems. Uh, and that allows us to treat each one of, of them individually, even if they are thousands or hundreds. Building, and this is another expression that uh, Makina uses in his uh, paper, building what uh, he calls uh, virtual intimacy with customers. Again, this virtual intimacy can lead us to, uh, uh, to a, a scenario, an environment in which we're all into a Cambridge Analytics uh, uh, version of the world. That's not what Makina was proposing. He was just saying, we want to know as much as we can about our customers so that we can provide them with customized services uh, and, and, and without uh, making it uh, uh, more costly at our ends. Okay. So always think of this building a dialogue. It's a dialogue between customers and our systems uh, in a way that is pleasant to, to customers. It's not, we don't want to ask them to start filling in forms because filling in forms is boring. But if we allow them to customize the product, they're actually filling in a form. Do you agree with me? And, and they don't feel it as uh, being boring because what they're doing is that they're, they're telling us what they, they, they want in a way that they're, they're, they're having. Let me see again the, where is the, uh, in, the, in, their, in, their, in their virtual encounter, they're having a remote experience with the product because they're telling us something by, by clicking and they're seeing something happen and they're, they're seeing their product being, uh, being built. They're actually becoming part of the developers of the products that they're buying. And uh, when, when we say that the, the, the customers are becoming part of the, the, the products that they are, they are, uh, they're, they're, they're helping us develop the products, we get a bridge to our second paper of today, and Nambisan and Nambisan. This uh, paper was written more than 10 years after the previous paper. Uh, if we look at the references, it doesn't cite Makina directly, so Makina is not one of the references here. But uh, I'd say that it's almost impossible that uh, ideas like Makina's and, and, and other authors from the 90s did not impact these guys to write about the, this virtual customer environment. Because what they're, they're, they're doing now is they're providing us with the tools and examples of building the dialogue right? the, 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 in, in this paper. This is a paper in which the dialogue has been built uh, with examples of different companies that used technology to build dialogues with customers for different purposes. Right? Um, if we think of uh, some of these purposes, uh, let me show you what the authors thought of. So this is uh, the types of virtual customer environments that they thought of. Uh, they were, of course, this was 2008, this was still thoughts uh, cons uh, of, uh, considering a big screen, a big, uh, more than, they were not, uh, this paper here was not still thinking of people relating to their customers through, the, through their cell phones. Uh, I think the smartphone appeared in the market right after this paper, maybe 2009, 2010, that, that, that was when smartphones started becoming more available. So this, still, uh, this paper still, um, I think m m most of the ideas here were thinking of uh, someone interacting with, with the company through a larger screen, like the ones that we are, at least that I'm using here to talk to you, a computer. Uh, but it's, 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 it's the, let's say it, it's, uh, it's a discussion of this uh, uh, new possibility of interactions in, in, in this, uh, building the, the virtual intimacy, uh, the same that was proposed by, by McKenna uh, 10 years uh, earlier, right? Uh, when we look at this uh, table here, we see that the authors uh, provide us with examples of customers being brought into action as product conceptualizers, uh, as product, product designers, as product testers, as product support specialists, as product marketers. Uh, in, their, in their research, they were able to figure out or, or find out examples of uh, well, companies, and, and, and in this case, this, these are all companies that uh, are still in the market and, and companies that we, we know about, uh, companies that involved their customers in those roles 
by means of building virtual environments in which they could interact with their customers. Um, I don't see here, we'll, we'll discuss each one of those, but I don't see here in these columns of this table, uh, a column in which they, ha they, 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 they have the, the customer as the product producer. It's weird because uh, I do think that many times, many companies are turning us, the customers, into the producers of the products that they sell to us afterwards. I don't know if you if you think of any examples of that. Uh, the the customer as the producer of the product that uh, he or she is going to buy afterwards. I don't want to say it's exactly the same case when we talked about Nike feature where you had to well, actually create the the shoes or design it because it's not like you are not being actually a producer of a new thing. In, in, I don't know if yeah. In that in that case, I would say that we are more like the designers of our. Although exactly. of course it is it is part of the the production already because uh, if it wasn't done by by us clicking and deciding what we wanted. It would it would require someone from the from the from the university from, from the company to to elicit those requirements to to, to understand what we wanted and, and have maybe a, a form to uh, fill in or something. So we we are definitely doing work that would uh, otherwise be done by someone at the the organization. But in that case, I'd say it's almost it's closer to the design of the product and the production itself. Does any, can anyone think of a, a situation in which we as the users are the producers of the product that, that is being sold? I can't personally think of an example right now. Uh... Yeah, they, they found, I don't know if they found it difficult, but they definitely did not come up uh, uh, with any of those uh, situations in which we as customers produce the product. Uh, well, there, there's a situation where we become the product. <laughs> Uh, uh, but but before becoming the product in the for example in the social networks, if we think of the of um, of Instagram or Facebook, in those cases we uh, and, and besides I'm not sure if we are the customers there we we become the product surely but we we are also the producers of the product in the sense that we generate the content that is valuable afterwards and that will be. Um, that will be viewed or will be assessed by 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 ourselves and by others, right? So the customers themselves build the content. I'm not sure if the customers are the customers there because the customers are you know the the, the users are not paying for it. Uh, exactly. But uh, I would say maybe maybe in the I think maybe uh, I would say I don't know if this is a valid example like it's similar to what you just said. Uh, I would say the courses that are available, for example, or un on Udemy and Coursera, for example. Mm -hmm. These are purely produced by users for that platform. Plus, it could be special requests from the crowd. Mm -hmm. Like, right. hey, we need a course of this. Okay. Now, yeah. this course is yeah. filmed, prepared, and sold on these platforms. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, again, uh, maybe it's, uh, we never get to a perfect uh, situation in which uh, the customer produces and, the, and, and that same customer buys the whatever he or she produced uh, but we see we, we get close enough i mean when, when in, in the social networks we the users generate the content ge the users generate the value that they will they will um, um, benefit from afterwards right uh, again in that situation uh, i i keep saying that i'm not sure who the customer is because usually we, we say that the customer is the one that pays right for the yeah. for something not the one that benefits from it necessarily um uh, but but it's it's weird that uh, because in, in most cases the one that pays is the one that benefits right in, but in, in, anyway in, in in this case uh w w what you will see here is a trend that started uh, happening with um with uh, maybe open uh, with, with open movements and, and and also with open innovation uh in 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 the early 2000s uh and and then this guys thinking gee uh the customers are willing to be more involved with companies, then uh, the industrial revolution allowed them uh, to. So now that we have the tools, why not to, right? And then we started having this. I mean, they, they, they did this beautiful uh, map here in which they say they, they give us examples, for example, uh, of uh, of customers being used as 
product conceptualizers. Remi notice again, although they don't mention Makina here, uh, think that uh, what Makina was proposing when he said uh, that the time to to acceptance had to be had to happen in parallel to the time to the market. Notice that these guys are proposing this. They say if they involve customers in in the conceptualization of new pro uh, products, of course, when that product is available, yeah, when when that product is available, those customers are going to be the first ones there to to buy it because they gave the ideas, right? Um, so one example here of uh, a customer as a conceptualizer was uh, the customers uh, of Ducati. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this brand. Ducati is a motorbike, uh, uh, an Italian motorbike uh, manufacturer. Um, the same same has happened, I think, in, in a previous uh, paper. We had the example of um, um, Harley Davidson, who's this, mm -hmm. is, this is a, 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 an American brand. Uh, but those brands are brands that have very loyal customers. It's it's interesting because uh, they, they don't sell just motorbikes. They sell a lifestyle. They sell, you know, they sell, in, in the case of Ducati, uh, most of its customers think that Ducati, what Ducati provides them with is freedom because they feel that when they are on a motorbike, having the wind on their face, they feel free or whatever. Uh, so it's interesting that the relationship that uh, a, a, a company um, has with its um, with its uh, customers this is something that I want you to pay attention, right? Ducati involves its customers as product conceptualizers. We'll have to check how Microsoft involves its customers and see how this relates to the, not necessarily the culture of the organization, but the way the organization, uh, the, the, the relationship that the, the organization develops with its customers. So in the case of, of Ducati, it's a love relationship, right? Uh, Ducati's uh, customers, uh, you know, love the brands, uh, and they want to discuss the future of the brand because they, they want that, uh, that brand to be around forever, uh, let's say. Uh, uh, and then um, uh, I noticed that uh, Uchi wrote a few things there. Let me see what, what it was. Um, a, a example is CMS like Wix, WordPress, uh, where you can create your own website through your specific design or engineering, you, you create your own product. Oh, oh he's, he's, he's still uh, dealing with that, with our previous uh, thought. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe that's, the, 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 Uchi, that's, the, that's an example. I, 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 don't, I don't think that there's always a perfectly fit um, example to any situation, but, but it's interesting to, to notice that uh, different companies are going to be able to, to involve their customers in different ways. So Ducati, uh, and, and not, notice one, one important thing for us here is, uh, the, the uh, of, of course, you could you could say why would customers bother to get involved and, and do work for a company, right? What is their motivation? Uh, uh, if the company is the one who's going to profit from whatever business happens, uh, that happens, uh, why why would customers care? And uh, so it's important for us to have a look at the this last line uh, in this uh, table, which uh, shows us the dominant customer experience components because what will involve uh, what, what will uh, drive customers involvement is the customer experience that they have right uh, so conceptualization if, if, if you want to involve your, your, your customer in the conceptualization phase you probably will want them to feel pleasure in doing that so this is why uh, they say here that the, the customer is involved in an hedonic experience. Hedonic, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this word, but hedon hedonic means uh, uh, related to pleasure, to, to enjoyment. Okay. Uh, uh, they, they also say that there is a pragmatic uh, reason for, for customers to, to, to be invo uh, involved as, as conceptualizers. And the pragmatic reason would be, well, I want them to, uh, I want this co company to, to conceive products that I would like to buy afterwards. So if I give them ideas and they and they relate to my ideas, they will end up producing products that I would like to buy. But <coughs> uh, thank you. But the, this uh, hedonic uh, experience is, is is important in this case. Remember, whoever buys a motorbike, a Ducati motorbike, or maybe a Harley Davidson motorbike, right? Not a Suzuki motorbike or a or a. There are motorbikes that are just means of transportation, right? For most, uh, yeah. for, 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 for their users. Uh, usually those 
uh, weak engine uh, motorcycles, people buy them because they're cheap, they're a convenient way of uh, moving from point A to point B. So I would say that, uh, well, I gave the example of Suzuki because simply because here in Brazil we have uh, Suzuki bikes that are, I know that Suzuki also has some powerful uh, bikes and uh, so maybe it's not, I, I'm not a bike fan, so I, I, I'm not very good the with commercial, the commercial ones, Suzuki, yeah. we are not talking about the ra racers. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, but I, but what, what I'm saying here is these guys that go with uh, Ducati, they, 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 love, they, they do it for, 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 for the love and, and then this hedonic experience is important. I, I want to emphasize this last uh, line here on the, the, the table because again, Ducati finds it easy to get its customers involved in, in conceptualizing new products. Uh, for example, I don't know I don't know how easy it would be for Microsoft to do that. I have the impression that most Microsoft users are not enthusiastic about Microsoft and love Microsoft. There are a few people that are like that, but in general. Uh, that doesn't happen. Maybe Apple. It's the only option. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We are, we are. We, most of us feel that we are trapped by Microsoft, and and and, and, and I mean, it's not that we are uh, that, that we we are completely dissatisfied with it, but it's not that we are enthusiastic about this this company, right? Maybe, uh, maybe Apple could involve its customers as conceptualizers because I I have this feeling and notice like, only based on my impressions of the world. I don't have any any real data on this. But I, I think that I see that many Apple users are enthusiastic about the brains, and 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 maybe if Apple invited them to participate in in uh, uh, brainstorming um, meetings to think of, of of the future of Apple or where it should go with its products, I think that uh, people would be uh, would would be involved for hedonic reasons. If Microsoft invited people for something like that. Maybe some people would say, yes, I'll go there, but they would do that only for pragmatic reasons. or for, for Reasons are different. And I, I want you to notice that different companies will find it easier to involve customers to develop different tasks. But but all of them will be able to find uh, reasons for, for, for users to, let's say, to do some of the work that in, in the past or in other situations would have to be done by an employee of that company. Uh, let's see, for example, uh, uh, some companies involve customers as product designer uh, in, the, in, the, 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 in the design. Here they show us an example of uh, BMW and they talked about this customer innovation lab. Uh, they, they also thought of some of the reasons for which uh, as, uh, customers would be involved. By the way, uh, uh, among those, those experience components, uh, they claim that there are four main reasons for people to, to, to participate in, in, in these uh, efforts. Uh, pragmatic. Pragmatic is basically when you want to get a direct benefit out of, of participating. Edonic, when you do that for, for maybe for love, for for if you, uh, usability. Uh, uh, when you when you believe that uh, this will that, that you will get a more a product that, that that is more usable by you. Uh, and uh, sociability, when you think that being part of that that group that is discussing or that is is developing an idea is important for you, right? Um, so, so they have these four reasons. I find we will discuss uh, in one of our next classes the reasons why people uh, um, get involved in in in, in this um, uh, or uh, that, that get get involved in, in, in developing in, in in developing what we call collective intelligence. Uh, and uh, I, I think I've already told you about money, love, or glory. Uh, these authors here say it a little differently. Uh, Pragmatic would probably relate to money uh, directly or indirectly. Right? Uh, pragmatic benefit is uh, you you want to have a very direct benefit. Uh, edonic could be the equivalent to love. Uh, usability maybe is a little like pragmatic also. I want to, to to make things easier for me to use. And sociability could be uh, glory. It could be also love. So the reasons are a, a bit fuzzy in the sense that uh, different authors will qualify them differently. But in this case here, they use this for Four main reasons uh, people uh, get involved for pragmatic reasons, for hedonic reasons, for usability reasons, or for sociability reasons. Um, the table here also shows uh, the typical technologies that can be used in, in, in each one of, of these um, different uh, ways of involving customers. Uh, and let's go back there to, to the product conceptualizer. It says, when we're conceptualizing, discussion forums, Knowledge centers, blogs, wikis are important tools. Notice they're tools that are, are very open, vague, broad, because conceptualizing is still very broad, very, very vague. 
Now, if I want someone to get to be involved in, in, in the designing, of course, I have to provide these people with designing tools. So uh, I will definitely need to have here uh, uh, a, a, a virtual uh, product design and, and prototyping tools, uh, ways of, uh, well, and here messaging tools so, so that you can coordinate with others. But anyway, the, the, the tools are different. The technologies that we use for different uh, uh, ways of involving customers are different also. Okay. Uh, then they claim that uh, customers can be used as product testers. Whoever has already used uh, uh, be, been the user of a, a beta product knows what it is to be a tester. Uh, of course, this we're talking about computer pro or software products, but uh, product testers could uh, exist in any any sort of or for any sort of products, even more uh, physical and traditional products. Okay. Um, they, they provide us a, here an example of the Volvo's concept uh, lab. Uh, notice that if you're a tester, a tester in general, you, you don't test things for love, right? Ducati, Ducati would, I mean, they, they probably could uh, involve their customers and say, look, we have a, a new feature in, in our bike here that we would like you to test. But the customers uh, are, are not enthusiastic about testing things. Because testing is, is a boring part of, uh, of the involvement with a, with a, a brand or with a company. Um, uh, so, of course, the, the, the experience uh, components here tend to be the most, those pragmatic usability, the, the, those more related to direct benefits uh, uh, from that. Uh, then they also say that we could have uh, customers involved as support specialists. In this case, it's, I, I find this is very clever for Microsoft because again, being a user of Microsoft products for, for some 30, 40 years maybe, uh, uh, I, 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 have the, I, I have a feeling about the company that says that they found exactly where they could uh, involve uh, people more precisely here for, for their business. Uh, they, they, uh, Microsoft is very pragmatic. Right? It's a pragmatic company. Uh, it makes its uh, its users are also very pragmatic. Uh, if you ask people why they use Microsoft, they're going to say that they're, they're going to provide you with pragmatic reasons. They, they'll say, "Well, I use this software because the other people I work with use it, and, and then it's easier, it's convenient to to you know to be in a network of users where everyone benefits from from the network effect. We use it because it's infrastructural technology, right? Nobody's going to to if if you ask someone a Ducati." Uh, uh, customer, they wouldn't say that they, they buy a, a Ducati because everyone else has a Ducati, right? No, they, they probably buy a Ducati because nobody else has a Ducati. Uh, they, they want to, to be special, difference and unique. Unique, unique. exactly. Uh, but notice that Microsoft, then knowing that uh, people are very pragmatic in their relationship to, to Microsoft, of course, they are offering here an opportunity where the experience component involves very pragmatic results. So this Microsoft, uh, yeah. I think it's most valued partner program. Uh, it does something very interesting. It, it, it convinces users, if they're good, if, if they're strong users, if they, they have a good knowledge of Microsoft products, they say, look, don't you want to be a support specialist? When other people have problems and they, they ask for help in, in Microsoft forums, you go there and offer help. You help them solve their problems with our products, with our products, I mean, with Microsoft products. Uh, uh, and then we will ask uh, those people that you helped to evaluate your work. If they say that you did good, and if you do consistently good in helping them, helping other customers, we will provide you with this badge, let's say with this uh, title. You, you, we'll allow you to use the, let's say the title, Microsoft Most Valued Partner, that you can use in your cards, uh, if, if you're still uh, a more traditional person, or, or you can write in your LinkedIn uh, profile and say that you're most valued business partner, and, and that will help you sell your services to other people later. But notice, you give your, you give your service away to our own customers, your, our customers will assess the quality of your work, we'll, Microsoft doesn't have to do any effort there. Others, uh, the others will say, yes, these guys are, are good as Microsoft, uh, they know Microsoft products well, and then we will acknowledge you for what the market already acknowledges you, and then you can maybe make a profit. The reason is very pragmatic, right? Uh, of course, there is also sociability here because uh, there are people that will do that uh, 
also to, to help others to, to, to be part of a community. But the main thing is probably, the main reason here is probably also pragmatic. Okay. Uh, and then we have, um, uh, they also have a key here, a, a column uh, in which they say that uh, companies can uh, make their, their users or their customers become product marketers. Uh, I think all customers uh, in any stage, we don't need to be, uh, uh, we didn't need Nambisan and Nambisan to tell us, but uh, when, when we experience a product and, it, and when we like it, we become uh, advertisers of this product to, to other people, who probably our friends, right, our colleagues who will say, oh, you, you bought that product, what do you think of it? Uh, of course, we may be marketers uh, in the sense that we make, make others buy the same product, or we may be marketers in the sense of saying, please don't buy it, right? Uh, but, uh, uh, well, here they, they give uh, the example of the Samsung's virtual product launch center. Uh, I, I have maybe the, the best example I have of customers becoming the product marketer was what happened with Hotmail when it was still not Microsoft. When Hotmail, uh, as a startup, it grew uh, in the whole world uh, by having the customers... Um, the customers being its its marketer. Uh, I, I had a, a Hotmail account at the very early stages, and whenever I sent anyone an email, uh, my emails would have as a, the last line of the email would say, "If you also want to have free email, click here." Right. So whatever I wrote, there, there would be this last line. Uh, there, it's a good show, yeah. And and by doing that, by simply doing that, they they they. Took over the market at some stage. Hotmail had, uh, let's say, 90 percent of the email accounts in Sweden, without doing any advertisement whatsoever there, right? Uh, and of course, in a time where some of its main competitors were trying to promote in outdoors, in the cities, or or in radios, or the, the, uh, many of, of the other companies were trying to use the regular means to advertise their products, while uh, Hotmail was already. Um, Using their customers to do that for them. Okay. Uh, I think I just like another, like a better uh, example, just came to my mind on the category of as a product marketer uh -huh. is actually which we commonly see nowadays uh, using the influencers. Most of the time, you would see that a phone or a camera, a professional camera or whatever device that uh -huh. hasn't been yet released officially on the market, but they manufacture exclusive uh, products items for those influencers who they can unbox it, mm -hmm. showcase it on a video or even article or whatever. This is a pure example on it, product it, marketing. It is a pure example of product marketer. Those uh, uh, those influencers, I'm assuming that those influencers are getting the, the product for free and that's all, all what they're getting. Well, notice that they're doing that for pragmatic reasons. They, I mean, they, they got a gift. Uh, they, they got their product. In many cases, um, uh, it's more than that. They're, they're not only getting the product for free, but they are also getting additional money to advertise exactly. that. Maybe other discounts from other products. Yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we never. Uh, and it, the curious thing there is that uh, this is sort of a going back to the past, right? In the sense that uh, uh, that these uh, uh, influencers, they they are a bit like the old broadcasting logic, except that they are. Uh, they are they, they are they're a bit like the broadcasting the, the additional uh, the, the traditional advertising except that they already promote to a specific pub, uh, uh, public right so uh, they are influencers uh, uh, or, or they, they influence a specific group so you may you may have some influencer that you, you you're familiar with and that many things that this person uh, does get in front of your eyes and I've never seen and, 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 and that also happens the other way around, right? There will be people that I will see and you never saw because it's not really the, the broadcasting of, before, of the past. It's, it, yeah. it's, 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 it's a narrow casting, not as narrow as individual. But... It, is, it is, but relatively speaking, it is a narrow casting because like most of the time, as you just mentioned, Alex, like, I would say that I know some uh, influencer that you don't know. It, it all depends on interest. Exactly, what yeah. What are your interests? Exactly. So I am part of that narrow category, which is being a target for that particular content. Yeah, that, that, that's it. Uh, so notice, uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, and what these guys are saying is that uh, we can think of uh, our customers 
as promoters of, of our business. Uh, we, we can put our customers to work for us. That's true. Mm -hmm. And we can put them to work for us uh, in, in ways that they will do that, in most cases, here for free. Uh, I'd say the pragmatic is not necessarily for free. The pragmatic is the traditional, is more traditional. They will be either, uh, in, well, in, in none of these examples, they are paid directly. So they don't get any money from the companies here in these examples. They, uh, but uh, for example, Microsoft, people who support Microsoft as product specialists, they do have the intention of getting money from the market afterwards. They, they want Microsoft's recognition that they are Microsoft valued partners so that they can th then offer their, their services to others in a different uh, instance, right? I, I would say these, these examples are actually offering a type of a privilege that will give you the option to whether profit from money or have good reputation or visibility or whatever. Uh -huh. But yeah, more or less it's a privilege, I believe. Hmm. So uh, the, the, the interesting thing about this paper here is uh, that it opens our eyes to the fact that we do not have to, give, uh, to be stuck with the models of the Industrial Revolution where uh, people would only uh, put an effort into doing something for money, right? Uh, it's, it's not only if you pay me that I will do something for you. There's many other ways in which uh, people will feel that they, 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 that they would like to contribute even if, if, if not for money. Uh, at least for love or glory, that here they call hedonic for enjoyment, uh, uh, what else, sociability, for maybe it's for glory or for, or, or for love as well. So there, there are other ways of involving people and, and maybe we'll have to think more about these other ways of involving people uh, if we want to provide them again with, in the future, with, with value, uh, value that they feel that is important, we think that they feel that are important to them. Uh, what I mean here is uh, money has bought our muscles, money has bought our brains uh, for very long. Uh, we are, I keep saying here that we are too involved with the methods and, and too little involved with the means, but maybe it's time where we, well, the leaders in, in organizations should start thinking again, what, what, is, what is meaningful to, to people? You know, what do they really want? Uh, not of their relationship uh, with our company, but what do they want from life? Uh, and if we can provide them ways in which they they can get part of that from interacting with us, that uh, uh, that will mean we will not have to necessarily pay them for that. Okay, uh, and well, and and, and the, the 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 thing up with respect to this paper here, the thing that I uh, I find amusing is that they do not have a column here because most of these uh, the, the the topics that appear in the in the columns here are parts of the way in which a company adds value, adds value supposedly to the customer at the end. Uh, and they miss the, the main one that is actually producing the product. Uh, I do think that uh, we will be uh, stronger as companies if we involve the customer even in the production of the products that, uh, that, that, that we will offer to the markets. Uh, all, of, of, all of these activities in, in some way uh, engage right make uh, people committed to 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 your work to 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 to, to, to your business proposition or whatever uh, but there's nothing uh, more uh, in involving let's say than than being part of the production itself uh, so for me it's 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 interesting that they do not have a they do not think of a, a column here uh, the customer as the product producer uh, regardless of if we're talking about something that needs to be manufactured which makes it a little but 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 uh, nowadays as, as most of the products that we generate are our content uh, or our content relation or our information related there is many ways in which we can uh, involve customers also in, in production I, I would like if i were to write this paper or if i were the editor the editor who, who were to publish this paper i would say include please include another column there and find some example some good example of someone who's doing that because that's going to be uh, uh important for us all right um okay so uh Notice here, I mean, I have to go back to this model here. Notice that what we discussed today was vector one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we only talked about customer interaction uh, and, and ways in which companies can benefit from, from interacting with their customers, either because the customers get involved in, 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 in producing uh, value uh, or because the, the, the customers get involved in ways that the company understands them better. Of course, when we're talking about the company understanding customers better, we are also talking about the third vector here, which is the knowledge leverage, because understanding better the customer means that we understand better 
the company itself. The company only makes sense if it has uh, uh, customers that value what the company does, right? Uh, for our uh, next uh, class on Monday, we will focus again on the second vector. Uh, we will do... Sorry. We will start doing a simulation uh, we'll be playing the beer game. This beer game is a, is a game that was thought of by some professors at the MIT uh, in the early 1950s. Uh, and what they wanted to explore there was the information flow in a value chain, in, in a supply chain. Right? How, how, how does the, the information flow from, from uh, one company to the other? Remember that they were already thinking of companies that work, let me see, uh, in, let's say, in, 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 in a in a situation where you had already redesigned your network and you had the, your company did part of the business and someone else did another part and someone else did another part and and, and the, the end customer bought the results of uh, of the efforts of all those involved uh, partners let's say so we will we'll use the, the first half of, of our class to 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 play this uh, game it's uh, I told you in the previous class it is going to be a little challenge uh, challenging because I I uh, I created an, an instance of this game here that that, that was for four at least for four levels uh, of, uh, of a supply chain or, or a value chain uh, a manufacturer a uh, distributor um, um, uh, sorry a, a wholesaler and a retailer uh, we only have three people plus me and of course I, I know the purpose of the game so me playing uh, biases it a bit but what, what, probably what will happen is that I will play uh, one of the positions there so that we can have uh, the, the, the whole, um, the, 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 let's say, the, 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 the this is the interview with Michael Dell. I've already talked about it uh, before. An interview that Michael Dell gave to the Harvard Business Review uh, in 1998 about the way that Dell was uh, had developed its its business of selling computers. Dell in 1998 was becoming the largest uh, PC um, company, a, a, a PC seller in the in, in the market. Uh, so everyone had an eye on, 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 on Dell and tried to understand their business model. Uh, IBM, uh, Dell, and Compaq, the main competitors, were struggling uh, to keep competitive in that market. In fact, they weren't able to, to keep competitive. And to some extent, uh, what Michael Dell was doing here relates to our to, to, to what, what we will experience in our beer game. So this is going to be a good, uh, let's say, when we assess, when we try to understand what happens with our, in, in our game and in, in the information flow in our, in our, in our simulation, uh, this will help us. So please read uh, um, read, read this interview with, uh, here with attention. Again, you may think it's it's an old example. Dell doesn't work the way it used to work in the past, but uh, but I can tell you that uh, many other businesses would still benefit if they followed Dell's uh, what, what what they call the Dell's direct model. Right. So it's still very in instructive in that sense. It, it it's not good for Dell any longer, but it may be good for businesses that you are involved with uh, in your work experience. Um, I have, uh, 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 and the reason for that is that Dell's model was very good at providing dynamic customization based on, on modules that were sourced to several uh, different uh, suppliers. Think of this model when you read uh, the, the, the paper because you will see that Dell was able to build a very strong resource coalition. Uh, you don't see my mouse, I know, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about resource, the, the, the second vector there. Dell was able to, to build a very strong resource coalition with uh, some of its suppliers, uh, and uh, and that made that, that was probably what made Dell so successful at that time, right? So again, don't fight against the the fact that uh, Dell these days is not the leader in computer selling any longer. It doesn't matter what happens today. The world has changed. It's a different world. We can even discuss. The reasons why uh, or what happened in the world that made this the Dell's uh, model not a successful model any longer for Dell, right? But uh, but it's still a very I believe a very uh, interesting model for many other industries. Uh, and um, and then uh, 
we we will talk about the third the third vector on on Thursday. Uh, again, the third vector of this model here. We'll, we'll talk about in, in a different way, um, not not exactly the, the, the way that the, the, the Henderson and Venkatraman talked about it here. But we'll be talking about managing knowledge in the value chain and and from the value chain. Uh, this class is that one that we will start a little earlier, right? We'll, we'll start at twelve uh, until because this is that day that I have a, a, a thesis uh, uh, yes. meeting afterwards. Uh, the uh, on, on the twentieth we will do our last class. I've already talked to Admani. Uh, your final exam had been originally scheduled for the twentieth, twentieth, but uh, he, he he's rescheduling it uh, to the thirty or the thirty-first, I believe. I'm not sure if it already appears yes. for you. It is already three zero. All right, three zero. And then he has also. I asked him. Uh, to have another meeting with you uh, a week later or so, where I want to discuss uh, in in general the the results of the 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 exam with you. Uh, that oh no, it's not going to be a week after. It's it's going to be because I'm going to Saudi Arabia, uh, right? Right? Yeah, I, I think it's the 17th of of uh, October. Right? Right? I, I come back from the from Saudi Arabia on the 16th, and then on the 17th I have a, a, this meeting with you to to discuss the results of. of of the term. So now I think we are we are sorted out with with the organization of our our classes. And again, I apologize for the messy beginning there. I, <laughs> I'm usually a little more organized than I was this time. <laughs> All right. Uh, it happened. Things can happen. Okay. All right. Uh, I think we 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 have enough to do uh, for the weekend. The, the, you 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 have the the, the reading of uh, Michael Dell's paper. If you already want to start reading what we we have for later in the, the week. Feel free. Uh, I know it's, it's the texts are sort of uh, sometimes they're they're, they're they're lengthy, lengthy in, in the way that uh, engineers tend to be very direct. Uh, these guys, they're, most of them are the, the technology for them is this just uh, the object of their research or what they're doing. They're, 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 uh, and, but they research it from a business perspective. And when they do that, there's a lot of uh, business is never zero or one as uh, things usually are in the technical world. So there are many many different ways, and they, they have to explore the situation in ways that. You probably say I could have written this paper. Uh, they, they spent 15 pages. I can write it in one, right? Uh, I would say probably you can write it in one page after you write the 15 pages, right? But if you wrote just one page, it would not resemble those those 15 pages. So this this is why it's a different tradition, a different way of uh, of dealing and uh, with. It. But again, I think it's it's very profitable profitable if you develop at least a bit of this language so that you can speak English to to Vasin's, uh, uh uh, old boss or, or, or to whatever other boss around because they speak a different English than we, we usually do. In, they are a lot. Yeah. yeah. They uh, are a lot. Yeah. Uh, no, and, 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 and that's that's what will make a difference. Uh, and, and that we, that is, I believe that this is the way you will sell the value of your work. You have to understand the value of your work to the business as a whole, right? So there's no way a, a, an engineer can, 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 uh, can be valued and can value himself or herself uh, if uh, if you don't if, if you don't get at least part of the, the of the eagle's uh, perspective on how your work fits into something that is larger than it, right? So uh, see you uh, on Monday same same time. Okay, bye guys. Have a great weekend. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye bye. Bye.